Doug Cuny and this is my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make cultured butter. There are a couple different types of butter. The two main ones are sweet creamery butter, which we eat a lot of here in the United States, and cultured butter, which is more prevalent in Europe. Now to me, the advantage to cultured butter is not just the flavor, because the flavor is more complex, I think, than sweet creamery butter but there's also a living culture in it, which means that we're getting the benefit physically of that culture. I find it kind of amusing that in a day and age when probiotics are so popular, people will go out and pay top dollar for a factory made, a corporate made probiotic, and then they'll go and they'll buy butter that's been pasteurized and is, is essentially dead. Now you can culture your butter with anything that is a lacto-fermentation culture. That means you can use kefir, you can use yogurt, and when I started out I did use kefir and it worked very well. But in order to keep reusing the grains to get them out of the cream, I would have to separate them from the thickening curd and it literally meant getting in there with my hands and picking them out. By using a yogurt culture, I could actually just add the yogurt, let the cream culture, and then process the whole thing into butter without having to separate anything. Now, I'll admit that when I first started um, fermenting food, especially lacto-fermentation, I did it because I could make things like yogurt uh, and kefir a lot cheaper. I could make sauerkraut a lot cheaper than I could buy it and it was also much better than anything I could buy. Now when you make your own butter you're going to find out that it's going to cost you about the same as buying butter or slightly more. It'll cost about what some of the, art, um, the artisan butters cost, but you're going to find out that you can control what goes in it, you can make it without salt, you can make it with a little salt or as much salt as you want, and you have control, you're going to find that it's much, much more delicious than anything you're going to be able to buy. Like a lot of things in fermentation, the explanation is, seems more complicated than it actually is. Um, you're going to need heavy cream, you're going to need about a two-quart container, wooden utensils, you're going to need a yogurt culture. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the Madzoon culture that I usually use. So, here's what we do. Start out with two-quart mason jar, something with a sealable lid. Um, if you don't have these, you can usually buy them in packs of six at a hardware store. It's one of the few things I wouldn't suggest buying online, simply because I've tried this sort of thing before and a lot of times you get broken in transit. So, see if you can buy them locally if you can. You're going to need about a quart of heavy whipping cream. So, we'll get this into the container. Now, if you don't have a two quart container, you know, and you can find something else to use, go ahead, but you need to leave room. Um, mason jars, when they say quart containers, they mean literally a quart, right up to the top. So you don't have any room for expansion, which is exactly what this is going to do. So give yourself some headroom. Alright, so now you've got your cream in your container. I'm going to take my Madzoon yogurt culture and there's four cups to a quart so I'm going to put approximately four tablespoons of the finished yogurt into the heavy whipping cream and get stirred up thoroughly. Okay, 
now just like we would making regular Madzun yogurt with milk, I'm going to take a coffee filter, hold it down with the outside rim of the lid just to keep insects and contaminants out. Now, I'll put my backup culture back in the refrigerator. I'll leave this set out for about eight, 12 to 18 hours and it will thicken considerably and basically make a very, very rich yogurt. And then when it's done that, I'll show you what to do next. Now your yogurt is set up and you can see it's very, very solid. So, I'm going to want to put a lid on it, seal it, and put it in the refrigerator. Now the reason for doing that is that you want to chill the butter fat in the yogurt and I'm gonna say you should leave it for maybe four hours it would be better if you could leave it overnight as a matter of fact if you don't get back to it right away no damage done I've left it in the refrigerator for days and it keeps well and then you go ahead to your next step once your yogurt is chilled it's ready to be churned uh, people are always kind of surprised that you can make butter in a food processor. Although I've watched my friend Arliss make butter for years in a traditional butter churn and I figure if Arliss can make butter in a wooden bucket with a stick then I can make it with a food processor. You don't need any ingredients other than your yogurt in order to make butter. Now a lot of people will want to add salt and that's fine. Um, I'm going to say up to a teaspoon per quart of yogurt or you can put in a lot less, or you can put none in at all. It'll still make butter. And if you're trying to control your salt, or like I do, I'd rather add the salt later in the cooking process. Uh, in addition to just salt, there's other creative things you can do with it. Um, you could add garlic. You could add chives, any number of things. Use your imagination. If you were going to make, uh, let's say, pasta for supper and you wanted garlic bread, um, when you make your butter, make a batch of garlic butter. And then when you're ready to make garlic bread, simply spread the butter on your pieces of uh, bread, put them in the broiler, and make garlic bread. Now I'd like to be able to tell you that it's going to take this long to churn your butter, but the fact of the matter is, every batch seems to be a little bit different. The one thing that you can look for though is that when the butter actually, when the butter fats form and they actually form butter, you'll see them start to solidify and it will start to throw off a liquid. And the liquid that it's throwing off is buttermilk, real buttermilk, not cultured buttermilk. All right, so we've got our food processor ready to go. You just got the regular blades in there. You have your chilled cream, which I will deposit right here into the mixing bowl. There we are. All right, now I'm not adding any salt to this. I'm just going to go with it the way it is. So we'll put the lid on. And I'm just going to run it on continuous. And we'll watch what happens. actually happened here. I think you could see the buttermilk splashing around. The butter fat has separated and is sitting in the buttermilk. 
So next we'll go to the forming step. I've gotten myself a large bowl and a colander and a piece of muslin cloth which you can buy at any fabric store. This is really light unbleached. Um, Cheesecloth is a little bit too porous. You need something a tighter weave and a lot of places they call this butter cloth and there's a good reason for it because this is exactly what they use it for. So in addition to that I'm going to take a piece of foil and I'll set it down over here on the side and we'll get that butter out of the container. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in there and get enough to make one bell size ball, form it into a ball, and then gently squeeze and it will wring the excess buttermilk out. So we'll get that into a reasonably round ball. Set it right on your foil. Take your next handful and repeat the process. Okay. Now there is just a little bit of butter left in here. And I'm going to set the colander out of the way. And then I'm going to take this cloth and I'm very gently going to squeeze that buttermilk out through this butter cloth. Now as you can see there's not much left in there. Probably less than a teaspoon. Alright. So we've got our buttermilk and we've got our butter. So what I will do is simply form this like so and then fold the ends up. And it's ready to go into the freezer or wherever you want to keep it, refrigerator or freezer. I would suggest the freezer over the long haul. Alright, now don't just throw away this buttermilk. There's quite a bit of buttermilk there. You're going to want to save it. Any kind of sealable container will work. As always, I'd like to invite you to uh, subscribe to my channel, CUNY's Kitchen, and share these videos with your friends. I'm Doug CUNY. Until next time, take care.